Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Today's topic is using covers in the garden for different purposes such as frost protection, insect protection, and sunlight protection. I live in Spokane, Washington. We are in USDA hardiness zone 5B because we're in a microclimate, but most of Spokane is in zone 6. We are in the middle of a horrible drought and we've been getting extremely high temperatures since the end of June. And that's really getting old. You know, I mentioned different types of covers in the garden in some of my videos, but I thought it was high time I did a single video that gives you all the information you need on floating row cover, tool or bridal veil netting, shade cloth, bird netting, and hoops for supporting these covers over your beds. Let's start with floating row cover. I've got some on this cover over one of my raised beds, and I also have some on a bed in the back. I'm gonna show you what it looks like up close, but the first thing I wanna do is explain what it is. It is a lightweight woven fabric. It allows sunlight to pass through it, depending upon the weight of the floating row cover. We'll get into that too. And it also allows moisture to go through it. So if it were to rain, the plants will still get watered. Floating row cover serves a few purposes. In my garden, I use it as a physical barrier to keep insects away from certain types of crops. I occasionally will use it for a little bit of frost protection early or late in the season. And I also like to use it over my warm season crops to get them off to a nice toasty start at the beginning of the growing season. So let's look at the different types of floating row cover. This is lightweight floating row cover, and it's what I mostly use in my garden. You can see the light goes through it quite easily. As a matter of fact, it's rated at 90% light transmission. And of course, sunlight is so important for plants to grow well. The lightweight floating row cover really doesn't give you any frost protection, just so you're aware of that. Now the next level up is a medium grade of floating row cover, which I don't have here today. And it allows for 85% of light transmission, which is great, and it gives plants frost protection down to about 32 degrees. And you might think, well, heck, 32 degrees is right when a frost would occur, but actually it can occur on plants and cause damage at temperatures a little bit above that. This is the heaviest type of floating row cover, and it's known as either a garden quilt or a frost blanket. You can see it's pretty thick. It only gives you 30 to 50% light transmission, and because of that, you only want to use it for frost protection. You wouldn't want to use it during the main part of the growing season to keep insects away from plants. You're just trying to protect them from the cold. I don't use this very often in my garden, but it does come in handy. So let's talk about the use of floating row cover as a physical barrier to keep insects away from certain types of crops. The main purpose that I use it for is either for growing cabbage family crops such as broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi, rutabagas, radishes, and turnips. And that's because they can be susceptible to aphids and also to different types of cabbage worms. So there is the cabbage white butterfly, the cabbage looper moth, and the diamondback moth that lay eggs on the leaves of the plants. So obviously if this cover's in the way, they can't get to the plants and they can't cause any trouble. Aphids can't get through it, so they can't cause any trouble. I also use floating row cover over beet family crops. So that would be beets, spinach, and Swiss chard. And that's because there is a type of leaf miner where the adult is a fly, it lays eggs on the leaves, and when the maggots hatch, they tunnel through the leaves and ruin them in short order. Again, this is a physical barrier. It keeps those insects away from the plants so they can't cause any trouble. There's two other things I wanted to mention about floating row cover. 
First of all, I can use it for the entire season over the crops I just named because none of them needs to be pollinated. So that works great. The other thing is you might see a clothespin there and a couple clothespins here. You know, floating row cover will last a few years in your garden if you take good care of it. But even if you get a little hole in it, I just take a clothespin, pinch the hole shut, and then the bugs still can't get in. Another way I use floating row cover is to get warm season crops off to a great start at the beginning of their growing season. Warm season crops like warm temperatures and warm soil. So what I'll do is once I plant squash, melons, peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, those types of things, I will cover the bed immediately with floating row cover. And it creates this nice warm environment and you would not believe how quickly the plants take off. It's amazing. So you're looking at part of my squash arbor. You can see the plants are doing really great in spite of our horribly hot temperatures. And what I did is I covered them immediately with floating row cover as soon as I got them in the ground, left it on for about two or three weeks, and then I took the cover off. In addition to needing to give the plants lots of room to grow, I need to take that cover off so that pollinators can get to the flowers and pollinate them so that I'll get squash and melons and peppers and eggplants and tomatoes. Another type of row cover that I use in my garden is bridal veil netting, which is also known as tulle. I only use it on cabbage family crops because I've found that the plants like better air circulation. And I have to admit that even the lightweight floating row cover does not give a lot of that. And so that's why I use it on the cabbage family crops. Now, in case you're freaking out at what my broccoli bed looks like right now, I want to assure you that I've already harvested all the broccoli. It's just that I'm conducting an experiment. I have a friend who cuts his broccoli plants way back after he finishes harvesting from them. And believe it or not, they grow back and they produce another primary head. So I want to see if I can do that, although I have to admit this year's growing conditions have been challenging, to put it mildly. Now, in addition to the better air circulation for these cool season crops, I love how I can see exactly what's going on with the plants without having to lift the cover off, which is what I would have to do with floating row cover. It also keeps cabbage butterflies and the moths I mentioned earlier away from the leaves where they lay their eggs. Now, I buy premium quality tool because it has much smaller holes than the regular tutu kind of netting. And what I want you to know is that aphids are tiny and sometimes they can get through the tool. So if you have a horrible problem with aphids, I would stick with floating row cover rather than using the bridal veil netting. What about using shade cloth as a type of a row cover in your garden? We've needed to use it this summer because of our extremely high temperatures. And I hate to keep harping on this, but it has been absolutely awful here. Shade cloth comes in different weights, which you've probably noticed from looking at it at home centers and online. The general guideline is to use a lighter weight for covering heat-loving crops such as tomatoes and peppers because they still want that sunlight it just needs to be cut down in intensity. I would use a heavier weight over things like cool season crops such as broccoli and cabbage. You can also use floating row cover for a little bit of shade if you don't have anything else. But it's important to leave the sides up for air circulation because again, there isn't a whole lot of airflow underneath a floating row cover and you don't wanna bake your poor little plants inside. It's probably a little hard to see, but burr netting can also be used as a type of a row cover. It's used to keep birds away from things like lettuce and young seedlings. 
And in this case, in both of these beds, I recently planted all sorts of things and I want to keep mostly the quail away from the little seedlings. You can use it if you're not trying to keep insects away from the plants because obviously those holes would allow most insects to get through. Let's talk about hoops for a moment. You know, all of the row covers I've discussed in this video work best when they're suspended over a crop rather than lying directly on the plants. So what I have on this bed is hoops that we made from electrical metal tubing or EMT, sometimes known as electrical metal conduit. You can also make hoops from black plastic poly sprinkler pipe. And both of these types of hoops are part of a DIY project in my new book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. Other types of hoops that we use in our garden are made from a fairly narrow diameter PVC pipe. And we also have recycled a bunch of old half inch drip tubing. So those have worked really well for us, but something really sturdy like with the EMT or the black plastic poly sprinkler pipe will hold up better to a snow load if you happen to be growing a fall and winter garden. Well, believe it or not, it is just starting to rain. Hallelujah! <laughs> not that we're expecting much. But I do hope this video was helpful so that you have a better understanding of row cover options that are available to you in your garden. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'm dashing inside. Happy gardening!